guys, I'm sure coming at you today in Rage Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you all here chilling with me today, taking some valuable time out of your day, talking some RSL with yours truly. What could be better, right? So grab your favorite beverage or snack and sit back and relax, and let's talk about the Bumblebee. Luke in the Steadfast. I just gave him that theme song right off the top of my head. Little jingle. We need a little jingle on uh, champions in this game. Words that have never come out of anybody's mouth until this moment. All that money we're playing, pay, we're paying <laughs> Plarium to play the game. Hire a musician collab. What musician would you want to see inside Raid Shadow Legends? I don't need the extra work. That's my question of the day. Sorry, I can't agree with you. Probably because you don't work and you're lazy. And furthermore, music. I'm a, I'm a massive music fan here. Uh, it's missing from this game, right? We don't have a lot of musicians. We don't have any bards, do we? We have Tars the Fierce, right? Where he doesn't even have his 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 little guitar. It's not a called a guitar. What is it called? Is it a lute? Is it a lute? Go ahead, throw it to him. There he is. What do you think he's strumming? What do you think he's strumming? <laughs> oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. Stop it. Okay, sorry about that. Actually, we do have a bard, don't we, guys? I just forget about him because he's a dwarf, and I don't associate dwarves with bards. Hopefully that's not stereotypical. I probably offended somebody out there. That's cute. That's real cute. He doesn't even have a little uh, a little instrument, though. He just got the axe. Well, he's got the horn, I guess, right? Where's the loot? Is that the loot? Oh, it's hanging out of his backpack, of course. However, why are we here? Listen, guys, we're not here just to talk about musical instruments in Raid Shadow Legends, a very uh, often forgotten topic inside the game. But let me know if you want to see that along with a wing tier list sometime. Oh, no. Listen, Lugan the Steadfast, I, I'm familiar with the Bumblebee's kit, right? We've uh, we've talked about him throughout the, the ages here on the channel. He's not a new champion, uh, but I did a, a guide on him on my Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guides YouTube channel. That's a mouthful. I really got to shorten that down some, but my Ray Shadow Legends Champion Guides YouTube channel. You need to relax. I did a guide on him, and man, I have a blind spot in this game. I'm just going to cop to it right now, guys. I have a blind spot, and that is A1s. Their first abilities on champions. Sometimes I just gloss right over them, you know? Or I just quickly read, but I always assume they're going to kind of suck. You know what another champion that I've done this with as well? is going to be Astrolith. I'm like, okay, she's got the bomb, can't be resisted, that's cool. she got the exchange HP levels. But she really has that Assault Leader, right? Attack one enemy, fills a turn meter of a random ally by 15%, and then all allies by a 15% on an A1 turn meter fill. It's such a good A1 ability, right? It's, it's really good, and I have this blind spot for that, right? And Lugan is the same thing. Right? Uh, when I did a guide on him, I almost glossed over it again. You know, I almost just jumped right to the A2, the A3, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot to talk about on this dude. There's a lot of like on this champion. He's really good almost anywhere in the game. He's super versatile, which is really good. You don't see him a ton in the end game outside maybe uh, zone specific areas in Centranos. Scarab King, he can solo. Uh, you can see him in end game like Ice Golem as well, right? Where you're going to be taking a lot of damage. Uh, I guess you do see him a bit in the end game you know i guess what i'm trying to say he's not an s tier champion but he's really freaking good he's an hp based champion i'll get to the a2 and the a3 in a moment because those were recently ish changed as well but this a1 crushing blow i was pretty dang shocked at how much this heals i'm not gonna lie to you guys it's like a little vrask built into his a1 right attacks one enemy heals all allies by 25 percent of the damage inflicted 25 percent is a is a pretty big number and he's got really solid multipliers on this ability i want to say it's a 0.23 hp based champion right plays a shield on this champion with 10 percent of his max hp for two turns so he can shield himself for two turns, 10% of his max HP, which scales very well at 22K. And in that heal, 25% of the damage, all on the A1 ability. That's really good. The bodyguard is increased defense on himself for three turns on a three turn cooldown, then an ally protect on everybody else for two turns. This used to be a crappy ability, right? It used to be on a four turn cooldown, but they changed it. Actually, here's, I have the buff, uh, the patch notes up. Uh, remember when they used to buff champions all the time? Anybody remember those days? Yeah, I know. A lot of you probably weren't around. Gather around, boys and girls. Let Grandpa Ash tell you a story. 
Back when I was a kid. Save off story. <laughs> they used to buff champions all the time. Used to get them in batches, guys. Batches of four, five, six, ten at a time. Energy can't last. Bodyguard. Cooldown decrease from four to three. Perfect. Mark of Silence. Effect changed. It used to be one of those stupid abilities that was based on his attack on an HP based champion that there's no reason at all to put attack on him. Now, awkwardly, they left the attack the same. So like he has like an oddly high amount of attack for an HP based champion. There's nothing you can do with it, but it's I guess it's the remnants of days once that were once uh, uh, existed in the game, right? We have an AOE would block active skills on a four turn cooldown uh, block active skills on an AOE. It's not an ability that a ton of champions in the game have. It's a really good control ability. Granted, it can be blocked by stone skin. It can be a victim of polymorph. It can in the arena at least, uh, but it's still a really good ability to have, right? Because then you're basically limiting, especially in PvE, which is where this guy really shines, you're limiting the, them only using their A1 ability unless they have a cleanser on the team. Uh, so really good ability, really good control. It is on a four turn cooldown, but I wanna say there's only like one champion in the game with block active skills on a three turn cooldown. Is it, is it, uh, is it Vlad the Nightborn? Is that who it is? Uh, there might be two. Karato has it on a four turn as well. Now that I'm here, I might as well look. Vlad is so good too after his buff, right? Block active skills on a three turn cooldown. Wowie wow wow. Maybe uh maybe ramen too as well. This stuff you're talking about, it's all relatively unimportant. Sorry, I'm getting uh, totally, totally getting on a side tangent here. He has it on a three as well. Okay, okay, so there you go. It's it's pretty rare. <laughs> Let me just put it that way, right? Uh, but back to his kit. So they changed that so it's HP based on the A3. Really quickly, I want to pull up his multiplier so you guys can see as well. I was pretty dang surprised. Are you forgetting where you are? Shout out to HellHades.com here. Shout out to Ayumi Love for the patch notes on the balance changes as well. Scarab King, they give him a perfect 5 out of 5. They give him pretty good scores across the board. Clan Boss, old school. He can be an elite healer with that A1. That's right, an elite healer on this dude with the A1. What do you guys think about a 3.5? I think it's a pretty fair rating, you know, honestly. I might give him a four, though, because I feel like he's a little bit better than I than I thought he was, right? Uh, you can see the other areas that they score him highly in. All right, now, uh, what I want to show you guys is I want to kind of just burn a few gems. I'm just dying to burn some gems right now. So I want to go to Clan Boss and just show you him heal, right? Like, just off of the A1. I'll show you the build in a moment here. We're going to go Ultra Nightmare. Going to burn some gems. I'm going to battle and make sure... I don't turn quick battle on, which I did in preparation of today's video. <laughs> Hello. Anybody forget what clan boss even looks like? It's been so long just using the auto battles or the quick battle, I should say. Well, we can pretend that we just have a normal team here. Obviously, we have an unkillable team, but check this out. There's a little bumblebee in the left hand uh, side of the screen. I'm going to go with A1 and boom, we get 8,000 uh, heal just off of his A1. And I don't think we even got a... Uh, we didn't even get War Master on that on that ability. Let's look. Let's give him another shot here, right? Uh, isn't that pretty dang good <laughs> off of the the A1 ability just to, to shoot out a 10k heal every so often or higher? Let's give him another shot here. My hide rages around like 17,000 heal on an A1. <laughs> Man, that's elite level healing, ladies and gentlemen. And I, yours truly, the court gesture of Raid Shadow Legends content creators, I was a fool again, baby, because I slept on it, man. That's a big boy heal right there on that A1. On top of everything else that he's doing, right? Like, no big deal, just off of what? Two turns puts out 140,000 in healing? Man, oh man. The problem is, is I was not building him to be or to take advantage, I should say, of that A1 at all. I wasn't building him with any crit rate at all for the longest time. I uh, Let me show you the build. You don't have to go all out on damage, on, on crit. You don't have to like build him like a nuker. Just throw a crit rate on the gauntlets, or better yet, find the crit rate as a substats you know, on, on your gear and give him 100% crit rate. Throw on a War Master, and you're going to be good to go. Uh, who are we talking about again? That's not nice. <laughs> Lugan, there he is. I have like kind of an interesting build here. I put him in Guardian and Perception. 
He's a little bit tricky to build because we want accuracy, we want crit rate, we want a little bit of damage for that A1 ability and the A3 ability as well. Uh, let me just show you, finish showing you on Hell Hades, a 0.23 on the A1 and then a 0.26 on the AoE on the A3. I know 80% of you guys are like, what does that even mean? I have no idea how to judge HP multipliers. Let me compare it to Eric's for you guys. Eryx, who's a pretty hard-hitting uh, HP-based champion, has a 0.22 on her A1. It's an AoE, though, right? A 0.35 on her very hard-hitting A2 ability. So, you know, a bit less than an Eryx A... Uh, closer to an Eryx AoE on the A1, which isn't bad at all damage-wise, right? That's what we're getting from his A3 ability. Back to the build. I threw him in Guardian because, well, I wanted to get a little bit more damage mitigation out of this champion. I mean, he's putting the shield on himself, after all, right? He's putting the increased defense on himself. You know, ally protection, let's just keep it going a little bit. Let's let's lean into that ally protection and throw in some guardian gear as well. Uh, so we are healing by 10% uh, every turn and also absorbing 10% of the damage dealt to ally champions. I think guardian's a really good set for a nice tanky champ like Luke in the Steadfast. So we do have the perception on there as well for a little bit of speed and a little bit of accuracy. Really quickly here on the stats, we have accuracy on the banner. We have crit damage on the amulet. We have HP on the ring. We have defense percentage on the boots. A little bit more of an end game build here, but look at these. I have these guardian boots that might be, I mean, it's a bit niche, but they might be up there with the best boots on my account. To have a defense percentage and then have all this speed on top of it with a 38-ish speed right now on a defense percentage boots in a Guardian set, that's really dang good. Like, really good. So, I went defense percentage, then I went HP percentage, then I went crit rate on the gauntlets, okay? Again, a more basic build on this dude, especially if you're not, you know, don't have great guardian gear or whatever. You could run him in Immortal. You could run him in, heck, if you wanted to get crazy, you could put him as like crit damage, perception, maybe even go savage and try to get more damage. Got to do it. But I like building him tankier. So Defiant, uh, Regen, Immortal, stuff like that is where I'd go. I would even think about running like one Perception, two Immortal sets, get that HP and a little bit more self-healing in there as well. Because keep in mind, he's healing everybody else on his A1, but not himself, right? Either way, I did some, a lot of play testing. I actually had him in HP percentage on the Gauntlets on my guide on the Raid Shadow, Shadow Legends Champion Guide YouTube channel. Blah. Ray Shadow Legends Champions got YouTube channel. But I like him better with crit raid now upon playing with him a bit more. He gets really nasty heals uh, when you build that crit rate up. So those are the gear that I have on him right now, guys. Uh, I do have Brimstone on him. He needs accuracy anyway for the block active skills. Uh, and then a very basic uh, build when it comes to masteries. I did the, make the, the decision to forego the accuracy line of the support tree. And instead, I went down and picked up, you know, Healing Savior and, and, and Merciful Aid, etc. I went on the offensive side of things. I hugged the left-hand side. I picked up War Master. I also picked up Life Drinker along the way uh, just to get a little bit more self sustainability. He is at 100% crit rate after all, anyway. All right, so that is the build, guys. Let's go ahead. I showed you his healing already. Let's have a look in there. Yeah, well, this is definitely unannounced. Just let's do a quick damage check in the arena. Why not, right? Let's just jump into the arena. I don't know. This team, sure. Turbo's probably going to smack me, smoke me, whatever. Uh, just through a, a go second team, right? Now, you don't see Lugan the Steadfast in Endgame Arena, certainly, uh, but he could definitely be a viable option to mess around, have some fun with in the arena, I think, uh, while progressing, because again, he has that lockout on the A3. Moreover, a lot of support everywhere else in his kit. So let's go in with the Mark of Silence. I think Sound of Silence. I think some like, uh, <laughs> uh, what is that? Uh, Garfunkel? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Sound of Silence. All right, we're gonna go in. Uh, there we go. So you saw a block, uh, block active skill. They have no cleanser on their team, so there's nothing to worry about there. You know, at this point, I could go in with the increased defense, ally protection, but I, I frankly don't really need it. We'll just poke at uh, UDK, or we won't do anything, is what I meant to say. We won't do anything. So I do have a go second team with Eric's. Uh, obviously, Eric's for damage and him for damage. Neither of them need increased defense. That's kind of why we have them as an HP based team. Go second team here. Uh, looks like Turvold won't be an issue. Now we can go bodyguard. He gets the uh, the four turn because he has uh, lasting gifts mastery on. Let's just go a one. Try to end this with Eric's. 
not bad at all, right? So, uh, I gotta, I wanna do one more arena battle. Again, arena's not where this dude's gonna typically shine, but definitely can be useful. Uh, if you know you're not going into this massive stone skin whatever team, right? Only thing I would do to this team to change it if I was gonna run a team like this is probably put uh, Probably put Duchess or whoever I have in that slot in bolster as well because obviously it goes second team and we don't have that right now All right, come on. Can we can you die UDK? UDK you you always slowing everything down, UDK. Even my video, dude. I can hear people clicking off right now, UDK. Don't put this on me. Stop it. Stop it. Now, why don't you leave? Fine. Okay, so you guys saw him in the arena. Uh, really quickly, I wasn't paying attention to his damage. Let me do it one more time. Oh, we're going against stupid warlord. Get me out of here, man. Get me out of here. All oh, this videos, it's it's already going to crap, man. Oh my god. I came here to save you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. Boom. 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 I just want to do one more damage check on that A3. I don't wanna boom. Not bad. It's not like we're going against Taurus and Marichka over here, but not bad, right? A little nice little one-two punch from Eric's and uh, Luke in the Steadfast. He could be a nice little control uh, go second after your, your turn meter booster as well, right? Nice little uh, off meta choice for you guys. Uh, let me just go ahead and run him in a, uh, I have a Doom Tower team ready here. What do I have? I just want to see what he can do here. I just want to watch him in action, really, through this team together here in Celestial Griffin. All right, guys, this is Floor 90, Celestial Griffin, Doom Tower, right? Uh, you can use this dude almost everywhere. You're not going to see a ton of him in, you know, Ice Golem. I'm sorry, you're not going to see a ton of him in Fire Knight or Spider necessarily. He could still run support on those teams, though. Uh, still will get the job done. Uh, here, we're just going to get to the Griffin. And the reason I wanted to show you this team particularly, I, I wish there was a Scarab King because that's really where he shines the ability again just to solo scarab king is always the best way to go against scarab king in my opinion if you have the champions on your account to do it and he certainly can uh but i wanted to make a point with ally attack or two things on this dude right ally attack is really good ally attack and uh counter attack so like a fat man, Farrakhan in the fat, uh, or a Valkyrie, they're all spirit affinity too, so the affinities will match. Obviously, every time he goes in, Lady Makage, you can go double ally protection and run a Necrot the Great on the same team as him, right? Whoever you have, uh, every time he goes in with that A1, he's gonna heal your entire team. And we already see the size of these heals. They're very, very good. Uh, so he does very well on an ally attack or a counter attack team. The other one, the other note I wanted to, to share, and it's probably pretty obvious, and we saw it firsthand, right, in the clan boss, in the demon uh, lord battle at the beginning of the video, right? Super, super, super important that we always set him up with a decreased defense champion on the same team, right? Uh, that's going to be absolutely crucial because we saw what he healed for around 6,000 or so off of his A1 against Demon Lord. But then when we had decreased defense and weakened, it was what, 14 ish thousand? My numbers might be off, but you saw that obviously the more debuffs, aka weaken and, and decreased defense, on the boss or whoever he's attacking, we're going to get a lot more out of that heal on the A1. So he's taking a lot of damage right now. And unfortunately, he has heal reduction, but it's okay because we got new on the team and an ally attack we heal everybody else and the griffin goes down there we go so he puts out uh buh, 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 buh. again it's not going to show up all in the stat sheet there but just keeping the team basically alive right so you can use them in the way that we saw here in ice golem especially i love i'm not going to show you the whole run but i'll take you to the ice golem on uh hard to ice golem hard 10 before i let you guys go all right stage 10 hard ice golem just kind of threw this team together the cool thing is is he's going to die if we turn on the uh, the A2 ability, Bodyguard on the boss. If we don't turn it on, he'll stay alive. Either way, we're okay, because we have Lydia the Death Siren on the team too, and she'll revive him after he takes the fall. So you can make the choice if we're running a Reviver or Lydia on the team. Uh, I'm gonna turn it off, that way he just stays alive and he doesn't die at all. And he can just concentrate on blocking out the two uh, minions of the Ice Golem with the block active skills on the A3 and just healing everybody on the A1. If they're blocked out with the uh, their active skills on the guards, the minions, they're not gonna be able to 
the land heal reduction on our allies. Thus, we're going to build a heal with the A1. I'll come back when we get to the Ice Golem. All right, guys, here we are at the Ice Golem himself. So we already do have a little bit of uh, uh, ally protect, obviously, built in, right, with the Guardian set. So we are still getting something from him here. And, of course, if I had a Reviver, my favorite Reviver to use personally against Ice Golem hard is Elva Autumnborn. Uh, but if we had a Reviver, we'd just turn it on. Look at that. He actually does get the uh, the heal reduction. Uh, we do have Mithral on the team, so she'll cleanse it away and we'll be good to go still. But we do miss, unfortunately, a heal there. So let's see if we get uh, the cleanses up. Perfect. Now you can go back in and start healing again with the A1, right? So here we go. Ice Golem hits really hard, but this team is like really robust, right? We're able to keep everybody nice and topped off. We have a shield as well with Mithrala Lifebane. Uh, we have increased defense with Mithrala Lifebane. We have ally protect. Uh, well, we don't have ally protect, but we have it in the Guardian gear with Lugan. And again, we have that cleanse actually beautifully timed right now uh, so that we don't have the, uh, the heal reduction on us. So there we go. A nice heal again. Ice Golem is going to go a big attack, but we're going to deny the revival thanks to Lydia. Look, that wasn't necessary. So here we go. Get another heal in here. Another 8,000 heal on that one. No big deal. We do have Sears Karma Burn shut off here, obviously. Uh, it'd be a little bit riskier, but, you know, I think we'd be fine with it. We, we might be fine with it on. All right, he's going to come in and try to revive right now. Nope. Soon. <laughs> and then Lydia will block. And then good old Lugan will come through uh, again in the clutch for us here. 8,500 on the heel that time. Didn't really need it. The nice thing is, is walking Tomb Drang is truly one of the better champions out there in the game, in my opinion. An amazing healer in his own right on the A3. One of my favorite burners in the game. Irresistible burn. Instant activation on the A1. You name it, he's got it. You can see we just landed Brimstone as well. Uh, land of the Smite uh, on the A1 ability, which is nice. And again, everybody's doing a good job staying alive. If we did have that ally protection up, he would die. Uh, the good news is, like I said, Lydia would revive him, so we'd be okay. But I'd rather him stay alive and just keep healing everybody throughout the duration of the fight. Uh, so, what do we think of this champion overall, guys? Uh, I'm obviously a massive fan. He's not a good of a, as good of a healer as an Elva or a Siffy or a Soul of the Drakes. Woo! Yeah! But he brings a lot to the table in addition to just the heal. I was just pointing out the heal heavily in this video because it's kind of something I totally missed. I was like, wow, this guy can actually do a significant amount of healing. Look at this. 666,000, the number of the beast. And 633 with Joaquin Tomb Drang, who has a complete heal in his kit, or close to. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you for watching till the very end. I really love the Bumblebee. Hopefully you guys do as well. Much love, and as always, take care, guys. Oh, oh, oh.